Hey guys, welcome back to Emolition. I'm Emma, this is Emolition. Last year on the channel, we played Elden Ring for the first time. We completed Elden Ring and it was one of the best things I've ever done and is now probably my favorite game ever, in case you didn't know. Uh, but one thing we never did on the channel was watch any lore videos together. I still haven't done that in my own time. I've obviously read a couple of things, seen tweets and what have you and memes, but I've still not sat down and watched proper lore explanation videos. And with the announcement of the DLC, I was gonna sit down and do that on my sofa today. And then I thought, why don't I get you guys involved? <laughs> Let's do it together. I've never done any reaction videos before, so I don't know if it's gonna be boring. I wanna try and chat about it a bit because I don't just wanna like basically re-upload someone's video with no commentary or thoughts of my own. So we'll try and talk through it as well. Um, but yeah, I've not done this before, so I don't know if it's gonna be good. Might be terrible. Um, who could say? Truly who could say. So yeah, this is gonna be a very chilled video. So grab a drink, grab whatever you need to get comfy. Let's just watch, um, I've pulled up uh, the Varty Vidya Elden Ring's Law Explained video. That seemed like a good place to start um, rather than diving too deep into specific characters. If you guys like this, we could watch some more. Who knows, we can make a full series, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, after seeing the teaser for the DLC um, released on the Elden Ring Twitter and all of people's theories about it, I thought I have nothing meaningful to contribute to this conversation because I don't know that I fully understand what happened in Elden Ring, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> so I'm also making my way through New Game Plus with my friend. We're gonna try and beat the game together again before the DLC comes out and then I can play it with you guys. So I'm feeling very Elden Ringy. I have my pop boy Alexander top on. I'm on my Elden throne, let's do this. I have to say as well, it's nice not having to wear the Pulse 3D headset, just sit here on my AirPods and watch something nice with you guys, so. This is gonna be fun. So, Vati, explain Elden Ring to me, please. Oh, my internet is so Our bad. story doesn't begin in the lands between. It begins in the cosmos, far away with an outer god called the Greater Will. Okay. There are a lot of outer gods mentioned in Elden Ring. You can think of these kind of like the Great Ones of Bloodborne, they're distant beings, they're all-powerful, and they're quite unknowable by design. Sarah. But many of these outer gods want to make their presence felt in the world. The greater will may be most of all. To this end, it sent a golden star hurtling towards the lands between. The olden stars in- I'm gonna need to watch this like 10 times, aren't I? <laughs> I'm already like- what? <laughs> Antation tells us that this golden star was bearing a beast, an Elden beast. The Elden him. Remembrance calls it a vassal beast of the greater will. If you didn't know, a vassal is someone who holds land on behalf of their overlord. Obviously, this is fitting in this case, because the Elden beast occupied the lands between on behalf of the greater will and was a living incarnation of the concept of order. As such, okay. this beast would later become the Elden Ring. Jelly Bean the Elden Ring Overlord is made up of runes of power, right. some great, some small, that together represent a sort of logic for the world to follow. Mm -hmm. Thus, the Elden Ring represents order. The true nature of this order is a subject of constant debate and research undergone by fundamentalists. But two of the key fundamentals are the laws of causality and regression. Okay. We can think of the law of causality as cause and effect, where actions have consequences, and those consequences are new causes that branch out into infinity. I feel like I've started this video halfway through. Am I, I think I might just be stupid because all I've heard so far is like words. I'm assuming this is just the intro. All right, let's give it a minute and then I'll try and make some sense of it. These are the relationships between things. Then there's the law of regression that states that all things eternally yearn to converge and okay. return to their roots. Fittingly, then, the Elden Ring is housed within the Erd Tree, which towers over the lands between. 
But it's very important to stress that life in the Lands Between did not begin with the Erd Tree, the Elden Ring, or the Elden Beast. Okay. No, the Lands Between were occupied well before the Greater Will came. There were other beings here. There oh. were other factions here. There were other gods here. And there was even another great tree here before oh. the Erd Tree. And this is where a huge twist regarding the Erd Tree comes in. So Twist. there are incantations in the game called Aspects of the Crucible. Yeah, like Crucible According lines, to their right? descriptions, these are manifestations of the Erd Tree's primal vital energies. And I quote, they are an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together. But how could all life be blended together in the Erd Tree if the Erd Tree appeared after life? That is a fantastic question, Vati. I really hope that you're going to tell us. Existed. <laughs> well, there can only be one answer, right? That the Erd tree is a parasite, and it took over a tree that existed here before. This ancient tree no was called the Great way. Tree. So the Great Tree was oh. almost certainly the location of this primordial crucible, and it must have been a very powerful primordial force for the Greater Will to have commandeered. That's the tree. Sorry. Sorry. Are you enjoying this? It's too bad. Um, that's the tree, right? That there's like two Crucible Knights in? Or is that the one where you find the Crucible Knight armor? Because that's interesting, if so. It might even be the reason the Lands Between is important to the Greater Will in the first place. It also explains why spells and enemies related to the Great Tree's Crucible would eventually be looked down upon. For example, the Knot Talisman is fashioned from a knotted vestige of the Crucible, and it was considered a signifier of the divine in ancient times, but is now increasingly disdained as an impurity as civilization has advanced. Oh, that's so strange. Enemies related to the Crucible are the Omen, the Misbegotten, and the Crucible Knights, and all three of them would be shunned, enslaved, or imprisoned. Oh, Those no. Those who speak for the Erd Tree don't want you to know its roots, so to speak. Oh. Ooh, so this is like a like a class commentary sorry not to read into it too soon that's interesting so Erd tree appears and brings this new shining golden sort of aesthetic and power to the lands between and then anyone associated with the great tree such as the omens are pushed underground and forgotten and uh yeah shunned that's really interesting and makes me feel kind of sad, actually. I now feel bad for Mog, if that's the case. Um, yeah, okay. According to the spell, protection of the Erd Tree, in the beginning, everything was in opposition to the Erd Tree, but through countless victories in war, it became the embodiment of order. Wow. In Marika's own words, the Erd Tree governs all. The choice is thine. Become one with the order or divest thyself of it to wallow at the fringes a powerless upstart but the greater will needed more than a big tree it needed loyal agents in the lands between to this end it has the two fingers who are its envoys the two fingers heirloom has a weird picture of them but it reads of course fingers cannot speak yet these are eloquent persistently they wriggle spelling out mysteries in the air. Thus did we gain the words, the words of our faith. Mm. These words are interpreted <laughs> by the finger readers. These are the undying old crones that you would have found throughout the lands between. Mm -hmm. They pass down the wisdom of the two fingers, or at least they used to. Your fingers, please, your fingers. I can read them. Did you read the Most subtitles? Most of them appear to That's have so lost funny. their purpose, and they're desperate to read your fingers and tell you annoying riddles, since their two fingers are likely dead. And oh, yes, that's sad. of course, there are multiple sets of two fingers. You would have found their corpses on the tops of the divine towers. Atop these towers, you loot the fingers in order to activate the true power of a great rune. Yeah. Specifically, though, you are giving benediction back to your great rune. Your taking a blessing back from the two dead fingers, essentially. This is just one of many blessings that the two fingers can bestow, and my point is kind of that the two fingers clearly have more than just influence. They have mm. real power on some level. 
the greater will needs these powerful envoys and agents because while it's obviously incredibly powerful it does seem limited by a few things first is space yeah. the greater will didn't come to the lands between itself it sent an elden beast so the greater will is a, a just like a force like a power it's not like a thing it's manifesting in the fingers the elden beast but like the greater will isn't like the, is like, it's not like an embodiment of something, right? The greater will is like an unseeable, unknowable, godlike force. Am I right? I don't know, and you can't talk back to me because this is pre-recorded, but I'm going to assume that that's, that I've understood and understood that correctly. To do its bidding instead. Second is time. There is a moment later in the game where your pair of two fingers go still because they're forced to commune with the greater will for guidance. When they are finished, the fingers will again offer the their guidance. But thousands, if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage to wait? So the greater will needs a physical manifestation of order. Got, it needs got you. Okay, envoys got you. to convey its I will, was right. but what it also needs is a god. Introducing Marika the Eternal. Oh! I have this oh utterly my gosh. enormous mind map of Elden Ring's lore, and there's Bloody. a reason she's at the center. She's essentially the equivalent of Gwyn from Dark Souls, except unlike Gwyn, Marika didn't just crawl out of the dark and find power. Okay. To an extent, it seems like she earned it. We don't know much about her origins, except that she is of the Numen race, which is actually an origin that you can choose say, you in can the choose character that, right? selection screen. Numen come from outside the lands between, and are supposed descendants of denizens of another world, long lived but seldom born. At some point, Marika was chosen as an Empyrean. What is an Empyrean? Mm. Well, an Empyrean is a being chosen by the Fingers as a candidate for godhood. As an Empyrean, Marika received the aid of a shadow to do her bidding. Mm. So what is a shadow? Well, it's a wolf, shadow-bound to its Empyrean by the two fingers. I feel like I read that Blythe is Rani's shadow, right? It's hard to avoid a lot of, like, um, theories and stuff on Twitter, but I've never had it pulled together for me quite like this. But that makes a lot of sense. But then what is Rani's relationship to Marika then? Or are they not related? They're just both Empyreans, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Luna Princess Rani is another example of an Empyrean with a shadow-bound beast. I could have just shut up, couldn't I? <laughs> These creatures are the Empyrean's very own shadow. They are completely loyal to their needs and, by definition, incapable of treachery. Ooh. Marika's shadow was a beast called Malaketh. Every Empyrean uses their shadow in different ways, but Marika's sole need of her shadow was as a vessel to lock away destined death. Okay. So what is destined death? Well, according so to Enya, it's the rune of death. The rune of death goes by two names. The other is destined death. We mentioned earlier that the Elden Ring is made up of runes, and mm. at some point, Maybe when she was chosen as a god, Marika plucked the Rune of Death from the Elden Ring. She gave the Rune of Death to Malekith, her totally loyal shadow, who bore a black blade imbued mm -hmm. with this rune. It's kind of genius, really. In a single act, she removed the concept of death from the lands between, while also commanding total control of death through her shadow, who could deliver it at her whim. So she removed the concept of death. Now, some of you might be asking, Maybe if death that's is why removed so many, from the like, lands between, how come I can people? kill this dog? First off, Stop. shame on you. Second, from a law point of view, that dog isn't really dead. It's simply in the process of its spirit, or its oh. soul, returning to the Erd Tree. Uh, catacomb oh. dungeons, for example, are specifically constructed near the roots of the Great Tree for this reason, so that the Erd Tree can reabsorb their ashes back into it. This process replaced the concept of a death <laughs> that you were That's destined so cool. to have. Ooh. But this random spirit outside of a catacomb dungeon says it best. Oh, 
as another example of this theory, uh, when you kill a major boss, I've you just, receive um, a remembrance. Of I just realized the friggin' subtitles are a bit cut off for you guys because my thing isn't quite the right size. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to make content. These are spirits and they are hewn into the Erd tree. I'm sorry. In this way, thanks to the Erd tree's grace, their spirits are immortalized in a sense. This mm -hmm. new form of mm -hmm. death also explains what's happening when you summon spirits. From ash and return to the Erd tree. However, some spirits oh. never return to the Erd tree and they rise within death as corpses or skeletons instead. Okay. So this was the new order. Wow. And it's important to stress that it was in this moment, when the rune of death was removed, when destined death was taken, this is when order became the golden order. The forbidden shadow plucked from the golden order upon its creation. Specifically, this was Marika's golden order. So not only did she become a god and a vessel for the Elden Ring, she became renowned as Marika the Eternal for her removal of destined death. This is too much. It was much. a huge part of her character and this her reign too much. as well. <laughs> However, Marika had more than just death to conquer. She had wars to fight, as the world was occupied by many forces that could threaten her golden order. There was war with the Stormlord, who likely ruled over Stormvale. Okay. There was a war with the Giants, who were masters of a flame that could burn the Erd Tree. There was war with the Ancient Dragons, who incidentally had stones that could twist time and thus slay a god. Oh, and wow. finally, there was war brewing with the Carrion Royalty, who had previously obeyed laws which contravened the Golden Order. Thus, oh. sort of similar to how the Greater Will needed an Empyrean to enforce its will, Marika herself needed someone to wage war. Do you know what? I keep reading the subtitles here from Vati, and the amount of things he is saying he has found from, like, NPC dialogue is just amazing, because if we think how long it takes us as fans or, like, researchers like Vati to glean all of this information from dialogue and item descriptions etc it just makes me wish wish that we could go into like the elden ring writer's room or whatever and just see how they plotted all of this out and how they intended it to be read i have no doubt that this is pretty bang on but like it must have taken so long to build this world and the relationships between the armies and all of this, like, all of the, like, physics behind it all, if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense, but it's just insane. It reminds me of Ristic Studies' latest video uh, on Magic the Gathering Phyrexia, and there's a linguist and language expert who has been deciphering um, the, lang the Phyrexian language on the Magic the Gathering cards and basically translating and interpreting it for years. And I'm like, someone out there has just the dictionary that like the creator of the Phyrexian language knows everything that they say, but they're letting fans decipher it for themselves. And I think like, you know, Miyazaki could come out and explain Elden Ring, but that would be awfully boring, wouldn't it? Like this part of it is just incredible. It's fascinating. That made no so, sense, but whatever. There was to be a husband, a consort, an Elden Lord. America needs a boyfriend. The man chosen was Horalu. A ferocious oh. warrior who became known as the Lord of the Battlefield. His choice, crown but, was okay. warranted with strength, and while it was for this strength that Marika married him, he was also required to take a vow to conduct himself as a lord. Okay. To suppress the ceaseless lust for battle that raged within, Horalu took the beast regent Sarosh upon his back. Oh, wow. You'll notice this is another example of a beast being given for the purpose of serving order. Thus, in this moment, he went from being Horalu warrior to Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, consort to Queen Marika, and a certified cool. demigod. Godfrey and Marika had three demigod children together. There was Godwin the Golden, who you saw being killed in the opening trailer, and oh, yeah. there were also the reviled Omen twins, Morgoth, who guards the Erd Tree, and Moog, who became oh, Lord of Blood. Realize. Did I know that? You might that? think that Godric was another demigod child, but he actually wasn't. Instead, he was probably descended from Godwin. Anyway, Ooh. we'll talk about the demigods more in detail in another video, so subscribe for that. 
But we're gonna have now, to watch that just too. Know that Godfrey and his offspring were the first demigods, henceforth okay. known as the Golden Lineage. Because Marika was mommy, right? In his wars, Godfrey mommy? led his sixteen crucible knights into battle, who were named so for they fought with the primordial powers of the Erd Tree. Their incantations were aspects of the crucible itself, and they likely fought giants, dragons, the Storm Lord, and more to usher in their age. The age wow. of the Erd Tree. In Marika's own words, Hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Mm, Let a okay. new epoch begin. An epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring, for the age of the Erd Tree. The Erd Tree would go on to be largely seen as a blessing for all of those in the lands between, especially those close to it in Lanedale, the capital city of the Erd Tree. The tree bestowed blessings. For example, the dew that dropped from its branches you? were like jewels. It loomed overhead as a constant reminder of order and its roots reached far and wide, relieving many of the burden of death in fact, Erd Tree Burial was one of the highest honours a hero could receive. Sorry, I'm just, it's just marinated in my head that Marika and um, Godfrey, Horalu, had Mog and then banished him because I guess he's of the Omen race or whatever. That's so messed up to do that to your own kid. Poor Mog, I cannot believe that. No way. Sad. One by one, the previous factions of the world fell. The giants were put to the sword and their fell god was killed by Marika herself. The ancient dragons broke down the walls of Lanedale but met fierce retaliation. However, I think the House of the Erd Tree encountered the most trouble against the land to their southwest, mm. Leonia. Here, the House of the Moon repelled their offensives time and time again. And I mean that literally, because there was not just one, but two wars fought here. And in both of these, there was no victory for the Golden, nor for the Moon. And I suspect it was probably because of these lobsters. These damn things can snipe you from like a mile away, and it's bullshit. Actually, it was probably because of the carrier knights, who, Ooh, according to their weapons, were able to wield set, sorcerous battle skills, and despite Bloody numbering lovely. fewer than 20, this power made them a match for even the champions of gold in battle. These enchanted knights were anointed by the Lunar Queen, a young astrologer who went on to establish the House of Caria as royalty yes, in queen. this land. With her bewitching lunar magic, she won over the Academy of Raya Lucaria, where glintstone sorcery was studied, and united the Carian royal family and the learned scholars of Raya Lucaria defended their home from the golden aggressors. This is interesting. At the head of this great golden army was Radagon. Radagon. Lord Radagon was a great champion possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host when he met Lady Renala in battle. These two champions clashed, fell in love, and joined their houses. Aww. Radigan once cleansed himself with celestial That's dew, cute. repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to it's Renala. Like Princess Diaries or the men. order of the Erdry <laughs> and the fate of the moon were conjoined. Wow. And all the wounds of war forgiven. You might think it's strange that the greater will would permit this union, but it's not too odd, all things considered. As with most From Software games, sorcery and faith are just two sides of the same yeah. coin, and That's fair. both of That's these fair. powers stem from the cosmos. So Radigan I think I miss something. Radigan was leading the golden the army of the Golden Order to attack the Carrion lands but then he met Renala and they fell in love and then they stopped fighting that's really cute Radagon and Renala were known to have three children together Luna Princess Rani who inherited her mother's propensity yes, for lunar I'm magic following. Radan who took after his father Radagon and would go on to master gravitational magic so and cool. Rikard 
who pioneered new hex sorceries and would go on to feed himself I to a great serpent. I don't think I knew that. It follows that no way. at some point after this, Marika began to harbour doubts. Doubts about the Golden Order that she had had a hand in creating. You made your in bed, America's girl. Own words, Time to lie I in it. I declare mm. mine intent mm. to search the depths of the mm. Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith our grace is Who increased. Is in all of this? Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. My comrades, why must ye falter? And it's at this point that we should talk about Marika's motivations. Yeah. Her character. This is surely going to be one of those huge points of debate in the coming years. But okay. for now, my working theory is that she wanted to discover the truth behind order and the truth behind the greater will. And she believed that bonds had to be broken so that they could be better understood. She believed that there was great meaning to be found in hardship. I could Queen see Marika that. has high hopes for us, that we continue to struggle unto eternity. Is that Gideon? For Lord Godfrey, Whose his struggle ended at the end of his campaigns. According to his armor, he led the war against the giants, faced the Storm Lord alone. And then there came a moment when his last worthy enemy fell. And it was then, as the story is told, that the hue of Lord Godfrey's eyes faded. In truth, he was robbed of his grace. That's sad. Then Marika sent him away. My lord. No way. And thy warriors. She's mean. I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. I'm sorry, so she made him fight her battles for her, and then she's just banished him. Am I hearing that right? Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. This became known as the Long March of the Tarnished, as Damn. Godfrey and his tarnished descendants walked away from the lands between. That's harsh. But Queen Marika absolutely had a Real plan harsh. here, that Lord Godfrey and his descendants would one day return stronger, having struggled outside of grace. Yeah, it's then, right. after thy death, I will give back what I once claimed, return to the lands between wage war and brandish the elden ring grow strong in the face of death warriors of my lord lord godfrey soon after she found a new husband she Either moved on fast a new husband was found <laughs> for her when godfrey first elden lord was hounded from the lands between Radigan left Rinala to return to the Erdtree capital. What? Becoming Queen Marika's second husband he left her? and king consort, taking the title of second Elden Lord. No! The mystery endures to this day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady yeah. Rinala aside. And moreover, I have the same why question. a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of Elden Lord. Yeah, what? Whatever the case, what? as a part of this union, Radagon's prior three children with Renala became demigod stepchildren, granted grace thanks to their new family tree. Wow. Renala was broken by this, oh. and so was her country, Leonia. Maybe. The Queen's set reads, when Renala, head of both the Academy of Raya Lucaria and the Carrion royal family, lost her husband Radagon, her heart went along with this him. This is so sad. And then those at the academy realized that Renala was no champion after all. In the wake of Radagon's no! betrayal and Renala's poor judgment, Leonia struggled with civil war with the academy of. I'm sorry, her husband's just left her, literally divor divorced, and left her with three children. She's heartbroken, and her people are just turning on her and doubting her. Where are your friends, girl? Raya oh Lucaria on one side, and the Carrion Royals on the other. And it's here, during the Age of the Earth Devastated Tree, by that this. Luna Princess Rani, daughter of Renala and Radagon, stole a fragment of the Rune of Death. Yeah. It happened during Good the Golden you, Age of the Erd Tree, long before the shattering of the Elden Ring. Someone stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Malaketh, the Black Blade. 
As mentioned previously, Malekith was Marika's shadow, and he had sealed Destined Death in a black blade. Then a fragment, only a fragment, of this rune of mm. death was stolen. And once this happened, Malekith went a step further in protecting Destined Death. He bound the blade within his own flesh. That's such pretty that badass. Such that might rob death ever Isn't again. It? it was too late, <laughs> however. This fragment of the rune of death was used immediately, that night, to kill a demigod, Marika's own son, Godwin the Golden. That was the first recorded death Did of a Rani demigod do that? in all history, and it became the catalyst. Soon, the Elden Ring was smashed, no and thus way. sprang forth the war known as the Shattering. Now, there is a lot of really credible evidence that Marika was behind this Marika? plot to have a fragment of the Rune of Death stolen. There's also a ton of evidence that Marika is behind the entirety of your tarnished quest, but we'll talk about that in another video. For now, all you... So I interpreted that as Rani was pissed that um, dad left mom. So she f just messed things up to be a troublesome teen, but I think it might be more nuanced than that. <laughs> you really need to know in terms of the timeline, at least, is this. After the marriage of Marika and Radagon, and after a fragment of the Rune of Death was stolen, Marika went on to shatter the Elden Ring, and okay. Radagon attempted to repair it, to no avail. The Elden Ring had been broken into runes, some great and some small. You know, it's said that Lord Radagon harbored a secret. A famed sculptor of the Erd Tree capital was once summoned to render Lord Radigan's likeness in giant stature when he glimpsed the skeleton in Radigan's closet. Mm. And as such, it's said the great statue harbors his secret too. Of course, the huge twist in Elden Ring is that Radagon is Marika. Or, depending on what you believe, Yeah, I was never sure her, about this. For she knew it was going to happen. In Marika's own words, O Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. You can tell when From Software is keeping something a little bit open-ended, and of everything in Elden Ring's lore, this will also go on to be one of the biggest unknowns as we move yeah, forward. What? For example, the wording, Thou art yet to become me, reinforces that Marika and Radagon were two separate entities before the Shattering. I don't think they the can't be the same person, However, right? However, in contrast, there is also evidence that Radagon was always part of Marika. For example, Enya says that The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. But how can this be if Radagon married Renala and had those demigod children? The only way yeah. that makes sense is if Radagon was always Marika and he just went over there to seduce Renala long ago. I'll present more concrete theories in the future, but on this matter, the most important thing is, what do you think? While you mm. can figure out a ton of Elden Ring story, not all of it is open to interpretation. Certain things are, and this is one of them. And your interpretation is a big part of what makes this story special. I think... And I really don't know if I've interpreted any of that correctly, because quite frankly, I'm a bit overwhelmed and confused. But if Marika is a, like a, a vessel, was it? And a, a manifestation of um, the greater will, then Radigan could very much be like an offshoot of her. But then I don't understand how they share... It hurts, my head hurts. Like, are they of the same entity? And then she sent Radigan to seduce Renala, knowing that they would, that he would break her heart and, and wage war in that way. But instead he actually fell in love with her, had babies, um, and then just left her feeling depressed and ruined her, um, her civilian's faith in her. I don't know. I don't know what I think. That's very layered. I need to watch more videos on this. I really do. I'm confused. 
At any rate, the union of Radagon and Marika seems to be a union of two fundamental opposing laws of the Golden Order. We mentioned these laws earlier, actually. There's the law of causality, and Marika is an agent of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And there's the law of regression, as Radagon is a character who aspires to be complete and regress together. So I have a theory that forcing these two beings that represent these concepts together would have corrected Marika's deviance. Uh, but even so, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree for the crime of the Shattering. Marika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. Who but locked her away? But even in shackles, she remains a god and the vision's vessel. The conjoined Radagon and Marika even had two demigod children of their own, Mikola and Millennia. These oh. two children were born afflicted. Oh. Mikola was cursed with eternal childhood, and oh. Millennia harbored a horrific rot within. Even so, these two children were both chosen as Empyreans. They were immensely sacred beings and eligible to inherit godhood from the greater will. Perhaps the Greater Will was just desperate to find a worthy successor, and indeed in the Shattering War to come, many would try to claim the Shards of the Elden Ring, and they would try to take the throne, including, of course, the Tarnished, who returned from their long march at long last. Mm. Which we'll talk about in the next main lore video. I should probably also mention here that if you become a patron, you'll see upcoming lore videos early, as that's one of the rewards you get if you pledge to the $3 tier. Like I but want if you think to. my channel really adds a lot of value to the Souls games for you to the point where you pledge $20, then in this new tier, you'll receive a new mug every three months Ooh. that has a unique design on it to I do with the games mugs. by From Software. There are four to collect. The first one Everyone you'll get go is inspired subscribe by Dark to this Souls, Patreon then right now. Ring, <laughs> then Sekiro, and figured this is the right place to end this video because the information here is going to be overwhelming. I bet it probably was too overwhelming, you know? It took me ages to commit these names and the relationships they had with other characters to memory, so I hope you guys are doing all right. One thing that helped me a lot was that we designed an enormous mind map with pretty much all of Elden Ring's lore, all wow. of its item descriptions, all of its dialogues, all of the relationships between characters that we can think of. We added all of this together and it helped a ton in learning about the story and visualizing it all. And one day I will make this asset available to you all because I think after doing it, I think this is the quintessential way to piece together the story. And I think giving you guys this asset eventually will make that accessible for people. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I want to thank- Where is Vati from? I thought he was American, but after listening for a solid half an hour, he sounds kind of English. Would that information be available online? Australia? What a beautiful accent you have. I, I never would have guessed that, so. Lovely. Is that really what Australians sound like? Okay guys, I could seriously sit and watch all of these lore videos, but I think maybe we should break it down um, into separate parts because my head hurts. My head hurts. Um, I'm gonna need to watch quite a few more before I start making theories and guesses about what's happening in um, the DLC. But I am excited to watch Fatty's video about that. We can watch that together if you want to, let me know. I feel a lot better now I've watched that. I feel like I kind of understand the physics of the world and the key players and everything. Um, it's just gonna be really, really interesting to find out um, what the DLC is gonna be all about and what it's gonna add. I would like to know a bit more as well about the time twisting rocks you know he mentioned um placidus acts briefly in that video like how is that even possible i just don't know um i don't know i don't know what i think i really don't i'm really interested in um what vati mentioned about the um was it the great tree um and then everyone who is remotely related to that being pushed to the side to make room for the golden order so again, subterranean shunning grounds, omens being cast away, misbegottens, etc. I think that's a really interesting um, narrative device that I would like to dig into more. So I don't know if there's a bit more about that in any of the other videos, but 
Um, I think I want to know more about that. Um, I find it interesting how they, uh, Marika would treat her own children, um, Mog and Margit. So I think maybe, gosh, three weeks ago, The Law of Mikola. Maybe we'll do that one next. Um, progressively most disturbing parts of Elden Ring. That sounds good. Maybe we'll do this one too. It's only From seven ripping minutes. the soul out of one's butt to sleeping with dead people to somehow revive them, this game is dark. <laughs> so I've created a list of progressively more disturbing Elden Ring facts and lore. And the two I mentioned are only the second and third worst. The last one is, I don't, I don't like that stuff. It's at the end for a reason. Should we just to watch start, it now? Let's look at our little guy, Bach. Wrong. Bad choice of words. You're the reason why he dies like this. I didn't he kill him struggle with his in my game. And honestly, I didn't kill him. Lack of self-esteem. But you provide him with his mom's sewing needle and another cool gold one. And he idolizes you for this, to the point where he wishes to call you Lord. Although he thinks that someone of his appearance is too ugly even to serve you. I mean, I'm sorry, look at you. <laughs> and since you're a monster and you just give him a larval tear to be reborn, he's ecstatic. And honestly, it's kind of sad. He doesn't even say anything. Just slumps over and dies. That's fucking But the part that breaks my heart is souls, you simply it? can call him beautiful. You're beautiful. And he won't feel the need to fix his appearance. Let's move on to the more disturbing oh. side of the game. And Haida is a blind woman who follows the light by eating the- I completely lost track of her quest. I've played the game twice and never managed to get to the bottom of Hayata, so- These grapes. Of course, we all know it can't be that simple, and we can see that these are eyes. I mean, she can't. For some reason, you feel the need to tell her this, and she's disgusted and throws up. <laughs> Although, the weird part is, after some time, it doesn't bother her, and she actually requests more, knowing what they are. What a sicko! In the end, her eyes melt out of her face. My eyes. My eyes. They're melting. And, uh, she gets set on fire. It's just, it's just not a good ending for her. <laughs> and so is the same to the people of Volcano Manor, as we can see a long form torture method. These devices put the user on their knees and bend their back until they're permanently malformed in that position. Oh. There's a lot of torturous experiments going on, and these victims- Do you know what? It's crazy, isn't it? How much you miss. Um, I've put over 100 hours into Elden Ring and I- I don't know, you take for granted, don't you, all this weird shit that you see? Like, these guys who scream at you, um, I was just like, ew, and killed them. I didn't even think, like, what happened to them. <laughs> I'm a bad person. Look at the Albanorics in their gamer posture. That's so funny. They're actually the first generation of Albanorics who are human-made life forms. Oh. Because of that, they are untouched by the Earth Tree's grace, resulting in their ridicule and torture. But the lifeforms had a second generation, where they are now honestly this kind of silly looking frog creature. It's, it's not that scary. They're just silly goofy For little guys. For this next one, the disturbing part isn't actually the omen killers, but their mask. Which foreshadows a greater being that isn't talked about. As you know, the omen killers are enemies whose main purpose is to kill omens. Makes a cursed sense. group of people born to have horns sprouting throughout their body. These killers wield a weapon made out of the omen's mutilated horns and wear a mask of an elder, which is an evil spirit that haunts the omens in their nightmares. The only other depiction of an elder is the imp mask, and I wonder what these evil spirits are and how the omen killers created or found masks of these terrifying beings that mm. torture the omens in their dreams. Let's move on to the windmill village, and Weird. as we approach, oh. a character begs not to be skinned and even pleads that his hide is dirty. The deranged dancers skin and then kill their victims, turning their bones into weapons as they all play around happily. Oh. For me, the game starts to get disturbing as we see the brutal outcome of beloved characters, and Selen becomes one of the worst. As we help her throughout the game and rip out her soul, we eventually succeed in defeating Jaren. She can now start to properly study the magic that had her exiled in the first place. Oh wow. But when we come back, she's unrecognizable turns into a grotesque human ball. No way. My. I never saw this. We can this. also assume who some of the people are within this ball. And one is very unexpected. Selen, of course, as we can see her face. Also Lusa and Azur. 
but a part I don't think is talked about is Jaren. And she makes a little comment before challenging him. Join the school to reflect on your mistake. Join the school is just an odd phrase, and I feel that it has to mean that he was put into the ball, as the enemy version of her is called the School of Graven Mages. Of course, it could just be a one-liner, but it is from software, so the odds it has meaning is pretty high. But it only gets worse from here, as we help Celevis turn people into lifeless puppets, unable to ever move or act again. The cruelest of times I find oh, this is with Nefeli Lu, devastated him do this. after finding a brutally murdered village, she plans to get revenge. But in doing so, it interferes with her father, and because of this, she gets cast aside by the oh. one person that cared for her. To make it even darker, while she feels guilty for betraying her father, you can offer her a potion. And in her distraught mess, she'll drink it. This potion is what Celibus uses to enslave people. This is so evil. I didn't do that. you just tricked her into drinking it. In the end, you turn one of the few characters who care about the innocent into a lifeless summon for battle. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> okay, let's now step into the territory of stuff I kind of cringe at. People I know in real life uh, watch these videos, but uh, whatever. Fia is heavily implied to sleep with corpses and foster their baby. It's, it's a weird thing. Essentially, these deathbed companions embrace warriors and take a little bit of their vitality. Once enough is built up, they lay with the corpse of nobles to bring them back to life. Through burying a child that is them or similar to them, man, I, I don't know, it's, it's really vague. She wishes to do this with Godwin the Golden to bring this demigod back to life. Of course, it, it always ends badly. Although, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is considered bad, it, it just is. Although it only gets more disturbing and gross from here. I mean, come oh, on, it's the God. Dung Eater. The name is kind of comical until you follow the story of Bogart, a simple guy who sells you prawn. He is disgusted and truly terrified by even the thought of him. And because of your involvement, you free the poop-eating villain, you idiot. We come back and he's bloodied wearing a cloth around his groin, begging to just die and not be cursed. Well, what you did is allow the poop eater to torture Bogart, then rip the soul out of his anus and eat it. What the, what the hell? <laughs> of course, that isn't explicitly said, but it fits the name in the Shiri Kodama theory brought to Small life by anus the bowl. Witch. So, the dung eater oh, wow. defiles the corpse and cultivates the seabed curse, meaning the one killed will be reborn into an omen. We also get to defile the dung eater too, and I'm glad the scene goes black, because I, I don't want to know what we do to him. <laughs> this is Those so bad. Don't even compare to the final one, which uh, I don't like to talk about. It's the stuff you avoid, and but it's it's fine. I'll just go quickly. Mogfor's dynasty needs a consort, which is a spouse. So mm -hmm. he steals Mikola, which uh, first of all is his half brother, <laughs> and uh, also Mikola is cursed forever to be young. That's why he's in a tree and cocoon because he's trying to break the curse and grow into full adulthood. He's forever a kid, so Mog marrying him is pretty bad. If you look at item descriptions, it kind of gets worse. You you get the point. I, I don't like that part. But to change the subject, let's oh. add another person to this list. Right there. That's you. You've killed or at least created the scenario for five of these people to die. And I mean, you let out the dung eater and he wasn't I did even do that, to be fair. Gonna do. So you're not really the best person either. But thanks for watching. I did not expect that. <laughs> it's messed up what um what more disturbing things await in the dlc time will only tell we don't have a release date yet which is really annoying but patience good things come to those that wait right well i feel educated in elden ring law now i hope you do too um if you want to soul splain anything to me in the comments go ahead i would love to chat law with you um i definitely want to watch a couple of videos about the demigods in more detail um i'm just gonna watch as much as i can so yeah that was awesome thanks guys i hope you enjoyed um i don't know if that was good to watch but if it was let me know and we'll do some more but yeah until next time take care i'll see you very soon